Hey, what's up? Tim Warner here, and I wanted to give you a lesson on using Microsoft Copilot in PowerPoint. Why PowerPoint? Well, <laughs> I'll just lay it on the line. It's what I'm using right now. <laughs> and I know that I had wondered what the experience looked like. Now, first of all, you see that I'm on, you could probably tell by the window elements that I'm on my Windows 11 PC, and I have my licensing through Microsoft 365. If I open my user menu here, the account here is going to power whether or not you're authenticated to use Copilot. And my understanding, I certainly stand ready to be corrected, is that Copilot Pro will unlock Copilot in the apps like this for individuals, and then Copilot in Microsoft 365 would be for teams and businesses. Alrighty? So given that, as you can see, I'm embarking on an instructional design project here that has quite a few lessons, first of all. And it looks like the first of these, I'm actually going to copy this to my clipboard just in case I need it. Why? Because once I get myself into slide view, something I've noticed is that this co-pilot button will only light up under specific circumstances, namely... You have to be in the slide view as I am right now with the film strip over here on the side. But anyway, you'll find that on the home tab over on the very end, we've got Copilot. Now, personally, something I'm really interested in is how we're going to be able to swap in custom GPTs. Now, of course, Microsoft Copilot, you're dealing with the generative pre trained transformer large language model originally developed by OpenAI. And I know, for instance, that we can create a custom copilot in Copilot Studio. I just am not sure how to surface it here yet. I guess it's just as easy as that it's not available yet. But as I was saying, well, I'm going to just do this live without a net. In keeping with the theme of this YouTube channel, where I try to keep things as minimally scripted as possible and as extemporaneous and spontaneous as possible, I wanted to do this with you live so we can experience together working with Copilot in one of the Office applications. So um, unfortunately, I don't see any way to add a system prompt, so I, we're going to just go with the best prompt we have. I'm going to say this is my lesson from my prep course on SC100 CERT exam. Please tell me more about this objective. Now I'm just gonna control V and then send that into the model. We can also try to select text on a slide, for instance, and see what happens there. Some other things that stand out is that I'm not seeing any temperature controls or customization controls, no ability yet to restart a conversation. Let's see what it gave back here. It's um, signing a solution. You know, again, at first blush, I'm not really good at a first impression while I'm teaching sometimes. Kind of embarrassing. I was recording a video the other day, and, well, it's a long story. Never mind. But I, I basically, my first blush, I thought, oh, this is great. And then when I read it a second time, it was not great. <laughs> but this actually looks decent. Now, am I going to copy and paste? No, because we don't do that. I mean, I'm using Copilot as just another information source to aggregate uh, now, let me see. What else might I try? How about I try this? Just select it and say, please give me a proposed lesson slide with three or four salient bullet points. So I'm just doing some initial exploration here, asking, seeing and comparing at a blush, at first blush, what I might be otherwise go into Google for Am I able to stay here in PowerPoint? Please give me a proposal. I don't recognize the wording. Okay, again, early days, early days. And I mentioned in my last YouTube video that I am admittedly skewed into a pro AI position. And I'm not skewed by any external entity. It's my own volition. So, yes, I try to look for the sunny side and everything. Um, anyway, yeah, okay, well, that's taking us down in a direction. It just, it clearly didn't see a link between what I selected. I'm going to say, tell me about the selected 
text on this slide. Now, from a bird's eye perspective, as we're seeing this come along, I want you to think about how it might be useful for you in terms of things like choosing a slide layout. That's something I'm also personally really interested in. Given that I have, depending on what the template is, a bunch of different slide layouts, how can it help me choose the best one? I don't think it can do that now. Uh, a good tip I have for you is to ask the copilot directly. Sometimes the most direct approach is the most direct approach. Can you access this presentation's underlying template and help me with it? I'm just going to be really direct with the model. Now, some other things I'm observing, I probably should have mentioned this audibly, but as of June 23rd, 2024, is, well, no, it's, it's not seeing that yet here. It's this, yeah, we're absolutely early days with this, there's no question. Now, I'm a little bit bummed, but at the same time, I'm going to try to, uh, this is admittedly synthetic. Uh, in other words, I'm going to do this because I'm pretty sure it's going to work. <laughs> we'll see. Let me choose a template that has source code on it, and I'm going to say Custo, or no, I'm going to say um, PowerShell or Azure PowerShell example. And the reason why I keep um, refactoring my text there as I'm speaking, that's something that generative AI has helped me to do. In other words, when I'm typing in PowerPoint here and I'm using Copilot, it may not be there yet today, but I know it will be. And I want to make sure that every information uh, snippet that I have is something that the AI could potentially understand quickly. So uh, a, a nice side effect of choosing a descriptive slide title is if I come over here, I may not have to be as explicit to ask what I want. It may be able, the AI may be able to infer it. Let me see, is there any context or shell integration here? I'm right clicking, nope. At this point, it looks like it's all straight up PowerPoint. Let's see here. Um, yeah, well, uh, the example that I actually did in my day job last week, and that's, that was really the inspiration for my creating this video, is that I wanted a teaching example. And what is this, what are we even doing in this lesson? Privileged identity management. Okay, yeah, so what if we wanted to, I'm going to say, not create a presentation, thank you very much. I don't know if you could see that. The text is probably small. But I'm going to say, please give me a teaching example showcasing the Azure PowerShell interface with Entra ID privileged ID management. So I'm not going to spell out words, but that's a pretty concise prompt. And as we see, the state of the extension, as of this time anyway, has the traditional controls where you can stop the generation. I do kind of like that it's giving us a bit more verbose feedback as it thinks. You probably have seen LLMs where you don't know if it's hung up, or if you're timed out or dropped. I do like that in Copilot in the Microsoft 365, it gives the user, well, a helping hand. Very helpful. Okay, it said I had an issue retrieving specific examples, but it gives me a connection script here. Role assignments, role assignments. That's not what I asked. So let's pause for a second. What controls are here? Well, I'm a little bummed. These plain text, that's good. I could always, let me see, could I copy that? I just did a control C and a control V. Uh, yeah, let me try uh, doing a paste special. Yeah, okay. So I was able to, there's no context menu, but I was able to select and control C to get that. And we've got a copy, but I presume that's the entire completion. Then we've got voting controls, and it looks like we can change the topic to create a new conversation. And we do have some very rudimentary suggested follow-up prompts. Now, what's this down at the bottom here? I don't use my mic on my desktop computer to interact with LLMs, but I use the mic on my earbuds or on my phone all the time to communicate with LLMs. It's nice to have it here. View prompts? Hey! Hey, check this out. So this is this has got my interest. 
Create, understand, edit, and ask. Okay, what's under ask? Oh, well, I guess it's just a stub, a prompt stub. Okay, not bad. Understand, summarize this presentation. Okay, let's try that. Summarize this presentation. I like it. The reason why I was a little confused, I almost guarantee you're going to chuckle if you're an older adult like I am. I'm 54 years of age. That when I saw this little book icon, didn't you assume that was a dictionary or something? I think I cast my mind back to the early days of Apple with their Macintosh and the System 7 OS. This reminds me of something like that. But anyway, the, I, I guarantee you, well, I can't guarantee you, but I jokingly guarantee you that the engineers who decided on this were probably half my age and would have no idea what I was talking about. But anyway, back on the subject, add an image of, oh, well, that's interesting. Let's see if we've got DALI integration here with Copilot and PowerPoint. I want to add an image of, well, we need to be careful with you know, brand names and, and celebrities and that. I'm going to say add an image of PowerShell scripting automation. So it's an intentionally, I'm submitting an intentionally abstract prompt. And let's see if we can have Dali. Oh, wow, look at that. That was kind of a cool surprise. Now, if you were constrained heavily by whoever you're making the deck for, maybe you don't want Copilot just inserting content into your layout. That's true. Uh, is that in theme with PowerShell script? Let me look at the, the code that's in the screenshot. I'm actually surprised that the AI gave us something with human intelligible text on it anyway. But let me see. It's intentional. It's really clever. The, the fake code it looks like there's just these clever blurs that cover up things that might identify the language, like a line comment. And even print, it looks like P and R are blurred enough to where it's not definitive. Operator classes. I'm thinking a lot of Python, to be honest with you. But the idea here, yeah, that I would say if I had to come down on a language, it's not PowerShell, it's Python. Now we could say, I'm going to select the image and say, no, the code in the image looks to be Python. I want PowerShell, please. By the way, saying please does make a difference in how the GPT responds. Somebody at oh, I, mean, I probably heard me say that before if you've looked at my content. I have it on good authority. No, nope, it didn't like that, that refinement. But anyway, let me see. I think that's about it. I don't know of any other capabilities of Copilot and M365 off the top. But what I do want to show you before I end this video, let me go over to Copilot Studio. Dot, let me see. Here it is. Microsoft Copilot Studio. I wanted to end with this. This is where we can create our own fine-tuned GPTs. And I wanted to show something in particular about the deployment. It's the option to deploy. Uh-oh, it looks like my trial expired. I thought I had a license. Uh-oh. Here's something that I give the Microsoft folks who work with the Power Platform huge props for. They're really generous about letting you extend a trial. As you can see, I would have been plum out of luck doing this demo but I can extend the trial with one button. That was really kind. Thank you, Microsoft. Don't have the time or the willingness to go through a full demo. I'm going to take an existing chatbot here that is powered by GPT, this baby name research assistant that I made. And I want to, I want to skip the tour, yes. Uh, I want to go to the publish area. Because I want to, uh, let's see here. Interface is a bit different from the last time I was here. Hang on a second. When you publish your, your GPT-powered chatbot, your channels here, I'm wondering, what am I missing? Oh, boy. It's just changed too much. There used to be an option for Microsoft 365. I, I don't know if, it's probably something I'm missing. But anyway, it, I want to leave you with that thought of, I mean, just think about me as a second. I understand you may not be an instructional designer, but if you were like me, what I'm going to do eventually is that I want to train or fine tune a GPT 
that is super smart on all of the specifications of my project. And it not only has the general world knowledge that GPT does normally, but has that fine tune. And I want to be able to load that into my PowerPoint. And I'm going to be a happy camper when that day comes. And I'm convinced it's a when, not an if. All right. Hope you enjoyed that lesson. Thank you. I'll see you next time.